Welcome to the Path to Happiness and Introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. In our last sessions, we saw how complicated the Messiah's course is when people don't accept him and how he is the one who's going to suffer the most, especially the religious leaders. They stuck with their institutions because all the people looked up to them and they couldn't risk everything to follow this son of God. The Messiah was kind of a troublemaker. He had different things to say and he even judged them for being children of Satan. They felt very justified to oppose Jesus. And when they did, they probably thought that was the last they would hear of him. In this session, we will see that God had a different idea in mind. Because the people of Israel and the disciples betrayed Jesus, Jesus wasn't even able to stand in the position of John the Baptist, much less the Messiah. And he was crucified. So the second worldwide course for the restoration of Canaan failed. And the foundation of faith that Jesus established by fasting for 40 days in the position of John the Baptist was claimed by Satan. But Jesus did not give up. He lost his physical body to Satan, but he established the spiritual foundation to separate from Satan by the 40-day resurrection period, still in the position of John the Baptist. This fulfilled the spiritual foundation of faith needed for the third worldwide course to restore Canaan. The Acts of the Apostles shows that after Jesus passed away on the cross and was resurrected, for 40 days he gathered his scattered disciples on earth and asked for them to conduct missionary work to prepare for his second coming. The original purpose of God sending the Messiah was to save all of humankind. And God wanted to save all humanity, even if it meant allowing Satan to claim Jesus' physical life. God always sacrifices those he loves for the sake of his enemy. On his part, Satan wanted to kill Jesus, the Messiah, not thinking that through Jesus' pure self offering, which Satan couldn't even comprehend, he would make a condition for all of humankind that were now on Satan's side to go back to God. Because Satan used his maximum power to kill Jesus, God could exercise his maximum power and resurrect Jesus, bring him back to minister to his followers and make the foundation to bring salvation to all humankind by engrafting to Jesus. Therefore, the third worldwide course to restore Canaan was a spiritual course to restore Canaan spiritually centered on the resurrected Jesus. The second Israel, the Christians, established the resurrected Jesus as an object of faith and began their spiritual course. After the cross, Jesus established the spiritual foundation to separate Satan through the 40-day resurrection period in the position of the spiritual John the Baptist. That is how the spiritual foundation of faith was restored for the third worldwide course to restore spiritual Canaan. The resurrected Jesus restored the spiritual foundation of faith through the 40-day period of resurrection and established the position of spiritual Abel that was needed to establish the conditions of indemnity to remove the fallen nature. Therefore, the Jesus followers accepted Jesus in the position of the spiritual John the Baptist, and by believing in and following the resurrected Jesus in the spiritual position of Abel, they, as Cain, were able to establish the spiritual foundation of substance and create the spiritual conditions of indemnity for the forgiveness of sins. How did this happen? After Jesus died on the cross, the remaining 11 disciples scattered. The resurrected Jesus gathered them together 
and the disciples repented and returned to him. His mother and brothers also restored their faith in him. The group chose Matthias instead of Judas Iscariot to complete the twelve disciples and followed and trusted the resurrected Jesus with their lives. Thereby the spiritual foundation of substance was established. Accordingly, the foundation for the Messiah was created. Therefore, Jesus, on this foundation, from the position of bearing the mission of spiritual John the Baptist, established the position of the spiritual Messiah and returned to heaven as the Lord and true parent. Thus, it is recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, that the saints became one spiritually, and the Holy Spirit came to them, and they started a new chapter in the history of the providence. The Bible says, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This gave the saints power over Satan spiritually. This is how the primitive Christian church began. The early church shared all things in common. It was a family-like community. We read that all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. But due to the nature of spiritual salvation, we are liberated spiritually from Satan's invasion as individuals, but our flesh is still full of sin. And there's no distinctive Christian teaching about marriage or family life. This is the spiritual providence of restoration through Christianity from the time of Jesus until now, 2,000 years later. Therefore, the Christian saints believed in and followed Jesus as the spiritual Messiah on the basis of the spiritual foundation from the, the Messiah and completed the spiritual return to Canaan on the worldwide level. The bodies of the Christian saints were in the same position as Jesus on the cross. So they were invaded by Satan and they inherited the original sin. Therefore, no matter how faithful Christian saints are, because they are still beset with the original sin, they are part of Satan's blood lineage and in that respect are the same as the saints of the Old Testament age. This is why Jesus and Paul called for celibacy, to live as brothers and sisters, not husbands and wives. So the saints had to walk the course to separate from Satan again, to make the foundation for the second coming of Jesus. We learned previously that the course of Moses was the model course that Jesus would take. Because Moses striking the rock twice became the condition for Satan to invade, Moses only spiritually entered Canaan, and his body was buried in the wilderness. Joshua succeeded Moses' mission and completed the substantial return to Canaan. Therefore, just as Joshua inherited the mission of Moses, the second coming Messiah has to inherit the mission of Jesus. He has to complete the worldwide restoration of Canaan by walking the substantial course of the principle. The Messiah has to establish heaven on earth 
as it was meant to be established at the first coming. Therefore, he has to be born like Jesus as a man in the flesh. Now, if the second Israel, the Christian believers, do not accept Jesus when he returns, he will have to restore the spiritual course by indemnity through suffering. So he will have to go through many hardships. But no matter how difficult that course, the Messiah will fulfill the providence. This is because the providence has to be established on the third attempt, starting with Adam as the first and Jesus as the second. Also, the second coming benefits from the spiritual providence of Christianity of 2,000 years, which introduced the age of the separation of church and state and freedom of religion. So no matter how much he is persecuted or called a heretic or a bad person, the institutions of the Christian world will not be able to put him to death. Therefore, the Messiah, based on the Christian foundation, must complete the foundation for the Messiah on the substantial global level by creating the foundation of faith and substance. He, with his bride, will stand as the true parents of all humankind and turn us into the true children of God as couples, having discarded our original sin. He has to restore the foundation for the Messiah on the level of the family, tribe, people, nation, world, and heaven and earth. He has to transcend religion and race in terms of politics, economics, and culture, and establish heaven on earth with God as the true parent of humankind. But just as Jesus raised up the second Israel to stand in the place of the first Israel, if the second Israel, Christianity, does not accept the Messiah, he will have to work with those who do believe as the third Israel. I will discuss this more in the sessions on the second coming. So now we understand why Christianity could establish a global culture, but only on the spiritual level, and why it has not been able to unite the mind and body, our spiritual ideals with physical reality, religious striving with material needs. Since Jesus on earth could not transcend race, religion, or nation, we still have wars between nations, races, and religions, and a vast struggle between left and right in terms of governance. It came from the course of Jesus. But we also have hope. Just as Joshua brought Moses' foundation to substantial reality, God will send the Son of God again Jesus will call his successor, just as Moses called Joshua, and he will bring Jesus' foundation to substantial reality, following the same principles of restoration that we have seen in the Bible. It's a lot to think about when we consider the prophecy that Jesus will come again. That's it for now. Thank you for your kind attention. See you next time.